episode 71. Let bygones be bygones. Rachel could not help but look at Joshua. He was wearing a hat and a mask, so she was unable to see the expression on his face. She could only notice his eyes, which were shining with a cold gleam. As she froze in shock, someone rushed up again. Joshua immediately grabbed her arm and pulled her to the side. He then kicked the man and said, Why are you staring blankly into space? After scolding her, he turned his head around and fought another man who was close by. Only then did Rachel snap back to reality. She stood with her back against Joshua and started resisting the group of men. However, they could not keep doing this. Rachel bit her lip and said, I saw Cheryl being taken to the second to last room at the end of the hallway in front of us. We need to rush over and rescue her. If we keep fighting off these men, something will happen to Cheryl. If they didn't manage to save her within 20 minutes, the immoral act currently taking place in the room would have concluded by then. Once she said this, Joshua looked at his surroundings. I've already called the police, but it'll take at least 20 minutes for them to arrive. I'll block them while you rush over to save her. As soon as Rachel heard this, she ran forward without another word. However, before she could run more than a couple of steps, she was blocked again. Given her small stature, she would not be able to rush out of this brawl. She started to panic and looked around frantically. Suddenly, she saw a metal pipe lying on the side. She immediately ran over to pick it up before rushing back to Joshua's side. She then yelled, You should go! I'll stop them in the meantime! Joshua instantly rejected her idea, saying, No, you won't be able to handle them. Indeed, I can't stop all of them, but if I rush into that room, there might be even more fearsome enemies waiting inside. Only you can enter and stop them. It'll be up to you to protect Cheryl. She swung the metal pipe she was holding wildly, so nobody dared to approach her for some time. Feeling conflicted, Joshua narrowed his eyes. She had analyzed the situation accurately. Her proposal was indeed the best course of action at this point. He had to go into the room and carry out the rescue while she handled things outside. These thugs were not vicious and unrelenting. Thus, they wouldn't be itching to kill her. However, the trapped Cheryl would be scarred for life if someone took advantage of her body. Given Cheryl's personality, he knew that if she was raped by a man, she might be driven to suicide. Joshua clenched his fists. The girl standing in front of him yelled, Why aren't you going? His gaze darkened when he saw that fierce expression and that selfish look. He pursed his lips and suddenly said, Take care, sweet Rachel. Due to the chaos around her, Rachel could not hear what he said clearly. She loudly yelled again, Go quickly! She could not hold the thugs back for much longer. At this moment, someone placed an ice-cold dagger in her hands. She froze momentarily before noticing that Joshua had already turned around and was rushing towards the room. He should have carried the weapon along with him as protection. However, he had chosen to give it to her. Before Rachel could ponder this, more people kept coming in front of her. She held the metal pipe in one hand and the dagger in the other, and then tried her best to fight back the group of people in front of her. Her arms were so sore that she could barely lift them. However, she could not give up. If she gave up, Joshua would be hopelessly outnumbered. She had to persist. Suddenly, the pipe got stolen from her. Then, someone used the pipe to brutally hit her leg. Her knees buckled and she fell on the ground. However, she grabbed the feet of the person in front of her and used both his body and hers to block the people behind her. Pain. She felt pain throughout her entire body. Her consciousness had already started blurring, but one thought flashed through her mind. 
she had such a great time beating people up in video games. Even if her character got hit, she wouldn't feel a thing. However, in real life, getting beaten up hurts like hell. When Joshua rushed into the room, he saw that almost all of the clothes on Cheryl's body had been removed. Her face was very red, and her brows were tightly furrowed. Furthermore, the man had already taken off his pants and was preparing to take advantage of her. When Joshua kicked open the door, he turned around in fright. Joshua momentarily broke into a cold sweat. If he had entered even a half a minute later, the aftermath would have been unthinkable. He walked forward and kicked the man so hard that he flew across the room and hit the nearby wall before sliding down to the floor. The man yelled while grabbing his pants. What are you doing? It was a consensual act. As he finished speaking, he was savagely kicked in his face. Joshua beat him up thoroughly. After making sure that nobody else was in the room, he turned around and intended to assist Rachel. However, just as he left the room, another two thugs rushed out from the opposite room. He saw that Rachel had already fallen on the ground and was being attacked from all sides. His heart clenched in his chest, as though a hand was tightly grabbing it. He desperately wished that he could have run over and rescue her. However, he could not do so as long as these two thugs were in the way. His expression grew increasingly colder. He looked back and saw that Cheryl had put on her clothes. Looking behind him, he found a fruit knife sitting on top of a bedside table. Joshua grabbed it and threw it at her, saying, Protect yourself with this. Then he ran to Rachel. Cheryl's fingers trembled, but she still managed to swing the knife in her hand threateningly. One of the two men went to chase after Joshua, while the other stayed and stared at her. Joshua ignored the punches, aimed at his back, and desperately ran forward. At this moment, he could only think about the girl who had fallen in a pool of blood. That was his sweet Rachel. That was the girl who would retaliate if she got stabbed by an opponent in a video game. That was the girl who he had protected with all of his might in the past. He immediately rushed to face the group of thugs before suddenly hearing the sound of police sirens emanating from the entrance. He saw that, at this moment, Rachel had already fainted after losing all her strength. At the entranceway, a group of policemen burst into the hotel armed with tasers. Everybody stop! Do you hear me? Everybody stopped fighting and waited for the police to intervene. However, at that moment, Joshua ran forward and grabbed the man nearest to the entrance. He instantly threw the man on the ground and started throwing a flurry of punches at his face. This man had just punched Rachel eight times. He punched the man eight times and then looked at the rest of the thugs. However many punches she had received, he would throw the same number of punches back. With a savage gaze, he grabbed some thug's shirt collar and started punching him. A policeman yelled, I told you to stop! Did you not hear me? Just as the policeman walked up to try to stop the beating, Santiago appeared in front of him and blocked his way, saying, Hey friend, can't you see the state of my friend's wife? She's pregnant, which is why there is so much blood on the ground. It seems like the miscarriage will be inevitable. Can you now understand why my friend is so angry? These thugs who gang up on women like this are nothing more than cowards. Once the policemen heard about how Rachel had suffered a miscarriage due to the beatings, they looked at each other astonishingly. Then they widened their eyes and looked at the scene once more. They had finally seemed to understand the reason behind Joshua's rage. Only after Joshua had taken revenge on behalf of Rachel on every single one of the thugs did the policeman attempt to approach him again. 
Santiago blocked them, again, saying, Boo hoo hoo, hurry up and send my friend and his wife to the hospital. I'll give the eyewitness testimony. The policeman watched as Rachel and Joshua got into an ambulance. Then, they blankly surveyed the situation in front of them. Only when the ambulance had left did they snap back to reality and stared at Santiago simultaneously. They asked him, Do you know what happened here? Will you go with us to provide a witness testimony? Santiago shook his head and said, I don't know what happened. You then please ask that gentleman from before to head over to the police station whenever he's available. Santiago smiled and said, I'm sorry. If you want to contact him, you will need to contact his lawyer first. Otherwise, he will not be able to provide you with any information. Policemen. If a public figure was brought to the police station by the police, he would be in deep trouble indeed. Thus, Santiago had learned the art of improvisation and quick wittedness. At this point, the policeman could only handcuff the group of thugs and bring them back to the police station for interrogation. She was in a daze. All she could see was darkness. Rachel tried to open her eyes but found that she could not open her eyes, no matter how hard she tried. She felt pain all over her body, so much so that she could not help but frown. She groaned loudly. Then she felt a warm hand collapsing over hers and heard a rich voice near her ear. I'm here, sweet Rachel. Those four words felt like a clear stream that was slowly quenching the fire inside her body. Immediately, she felt much calmer than before. Her eyebrows relaxed, and she fell into a deep sleep once again. Joshua held her hand and waited by her side. He had also suffered some minor injuries. His fist was bleeding due to the force exerted on punching the other thugs. Thus, at this moment, it was wrapped with bandages. He remained seated at the side of the bed, motionless. The woman on the bed had her injuries taken care of. However, he noticed that there were many swollen patches all over her body. Her face was swollen from being beat up again. New scars had appeared on her face, even though the old ones had not fully recovered yet. However, even in this condition, he could still see the beautiful outline of the girl's face. Those tightly shut eyes and trembling eyebrows all showed him that she was extremely scared. Yes, she was scared. Any girl would be scared after experiencing such a harrowing encounter. However, she still had blocked those thugs without hesitation, allowing him to rescue Cheryl. He stared at her continuously. Only after a long while did he slowly reach out his hand towards her cheek. His hand hung in mid-air for a while. He was scared that he would touch the injuries on her face. Hence, he ultimately dropped his hand again. Time passed by slowly as he sat in the quiet room. He mumbled to himself, or was it to Rachel? Either way, he said quietly, Sweet Rachel, we'll live in a peaceful life together from now on, all right? Let bygones be bygones. At this moment, he finally had a revelation after looking at her body riddled with scars. He would rather watch her stab him while smiling than watch her get hurt again. He no longer had the heart to take revenge against this girl. As for the accrued debts from the past, she had repaid enough of them so far, right? His gaze grew darker and darker until finally the only feeling left was one of the rich, immutable love. He did not care about their previous relationship because it had mostly been online. Thus, he would start a formal, romantic relationship with her now in real life. There was still time. The sunlight started to fade away, so thin light rays shone on his cheek 
as the sun went down. At this moment, his expression seemed extraordinarily gentle. Around 8 p.m., the lady lying on the bed finally opened her eyes. The first thing she saw was the hospital ceiling, and she could smell the piercing smell of disinfectant in the air. She moved her neck and saw Joshua sitting at her side. Before she could speak, he said, Sweet Rachel, are you still in pain? Episode 72 Call Me By My Name Rachel Rachel looked as though she had just seen a ghost. What she had just heard must have been her imagination. Perhaps it was due to the fact that she was not completely awake. Thus, she widened her eyes and stared dumbly at him. Joshua took a glass of water from the bedside table, brought it to her lips, and said, Sweet Rachel, drink some water. He had called her Sweet Rachel again. Rachel sighed as she laid on the bed. Then she patted her own head and said, Ugh, why can't I stay awake? Joshua. Joshua stared at the person lying on the hospital bed while his lips twitched. He then brought the glass to Rachel's lips again and said, Open your mouth. Rachel looked at him, motionless. Joshua said, Are you going to open your mouth or not? Why did he always have such a harsh tone in her dreams? Did he think that she would be afraid of him? Like she usually was in reality? She momentarily grinned and said, I'm not opening my mouth. As she finished speaking, he suddenly took a mouthful of water. Then he lowered his head and immediately covered her mouth with his lips. Oh. Rachel stared at him unbelievingly. Only when that warm stream of water entered her mouth did she react to the situation. This wasn't a dream after all. This was reality? After she swallowed the water, Joshua lifted his head and stared at her, dumbfounded expression. Are you going to open your mouth? Rachel jerked up and sat on the bed. Due to her sudden movement, she had accidentally stretched an injury, so she gasped deeply. Joshua hurriedly tried to support her. The next second, Rachel's hands were placed on his forehead. She mumbled to herself, He doesn't have a fever. Joshua. So she thought his actions were unnatural? However, it was usually normal for a husband to do such things for his wife, right? Then he recalled the events that happened since she had married him, and he lowered his eyes again. Indeed. He had treated her poorly, which explained why she had such a huge reaction when all he had done was try to give her water. How terrified was she of him? Joshua picked up a straw and placed it near her mouth. Open up. Rachel opened her mouth. He had never served others. Hence, even when all he had done was try to help her drink some water, he had inadvertently spilled some water on her clothes and had made them wet. He stared at her clothes and suddenly had an urge to smile. No worries, he thought. Even though he did not know many things, he could always slowly learn these things. As he thought of this, Joshua turned around again and picked up a bowl of porridge. When he approached her again, he realized that Rachel was absolutely terrified of him. M Mr. Joshua... Are you planning to act as a caretaker in an upcoming film? Which was why he was currently practicing on her first? Rachel was thoroughly confused. The corners of Joshua's lips twitched again, and he finally shouted, irritatedly, Shut up! 
Rachel immediately shut her mouth. However, she breathed a sigh of relief. Joshua was back to normal. Joshua thought, why can't I be gentle with her? Is she a masochist? He harshly fed the bowl of porridge to her. These circumstances were strange, indeed. Rachel only laid back down after she had her fill of porridge. Joshua also ate some porridge and then proceeded to go to the toilet. Rachel laid on the hospital bed but could not sleep no matter how hard she tried. The abnormal behavior that Joshua had just exhibited kept flashing through her mind. Could it be that he had finally noticed her heavenly beauty after interacting with her for such a long period and he had finally fallen for her? As she thought about this, Rachel happily took her cell phone and switched on the front-facing camera. However, when she looked at herself, she realized that her face was severely swollen. It was so swollen that it looked like a pig's head. Rachel. Even she despised her own face at the moment, let alone Joshua. He couldn't possibly like her when she looked like this. Could it be that this man didn't even like beautiful women? Did he only like ugly women? As she tried to guess Joshua's inner thoughts, Rachel could not help but lift the corners of her lips. She wanted to smile, but doing so only made her injuries hurt. After she took a deep breath, she noticed that Joshua had already walked out of the toilet. He was slowly approaching her. She stared at his body intently. He was wearing a white jacket and he looked both tall and handsome as he strode towards her. It seemed as though that day's fight hadn't even left a single scratch on his body. His face had no injuries or blemishes of any kind. She suddenly felt a sense of imbalance in her heart. Both of them had fought together. However, why was she the only one who had turned ugly and ragged while this man looked as though nothing had happened to him? As she thought about this, he had already sat beside the hospital bed. He said, What are you thinking about? Her eyes seemed as though they were glued to his body. He could not help but to curl his lips as a feeling of happiness rose inside his heart. Rachel gazed at his body until he looked uncomfortable before saying, Mr. Joshua, did you not get even a single scratch? Joshua thought, why does she sound disappointed? He narrowed his eyes and said, are you disappointed that I wasn't beaten to a pulp like you? Rachel began to nod, but then she immediately reacted and said, no, of course not. Joshua. Joshua pursed his lips and said, sweet Rachel. As he growled the words, sweet Rachel, and his low, rich voice sounded to Rachel like a cello playing the D major scale. The voice had a unique tone to it, a lasting appeal that caused her body to burst out in goosebumps. Rachel immediately nodded in agreement. The way he addressed her had made her blush intensely. At this moment, she was thankful that her face was already so swollen, so he couldn't see how flushed she was. Then she heard Joshua say, do not call me Mr. Joshua. Rachel widened her eyes and claimed, then should I call you best actor, Joshua? Joshua shook his head. Not even best actor, Joshua? Could it be? Should I call you Joshua, sir, like Mr. Santiago and the rest? Joshua, sir. He curled his lips. Even though the way she said Joshua, sir, was different from how the others usually said those words, he did not want her to address him like this. To him, Rachel was one of a kind. 
He continued to shake his head. Rachel. See? She was right. How could this man suddenly treat her so well while expecting nothing in return? Look at him. A leopard can't change its spots. And this guy could not help but to purposely make things difficult for her. She had no option but to keep guessing. Joshua Bro? Didn't most of the celebrities in the entertainment industry address him like this? As a female caster, she could be considered as part of the entertainment industry. Joshua continued to shake his head. Rachel said, Mr. Joshua, I have lost too much blood and my head is feeling woozy. I can't think anymore. So can you give me a hint? Who am I to you? Rachel said dumbfoundedly, You're my idol, of course. Other than this. Rachel said, I, I can't remember. Joshua's tone immediately turned icy. He said, Sweet Rachel, let me remind you that we live together, under the same roof. Rachel said, Oh, I understand now. Just as Joshua breathed a sigh of relief, she claimed, I should call you roommate. Joshua thought, What the hell? Rachel said, You see, if we live together, aren't you my roommate? Joshua. Joshua's lips twitched as he felt his patience draining away. The veins on his forehead started to pop as he desperately wished to pry open this woman's skull to see what exactly was stuffed inside of it. However, when he saw Rachel desperately try to widen her eyes, but fail due to the swelling keeping them shut, he finally said resigningly, Sweet Rachel, I am your husband. Rachel instantly froze. She looked dumbfoundedly at the man in front of her. His expression was quite determined, and his words carried an irresistibly commanding tone. So, did he actually mean what she thought he meant? She bit her lip. When Joshua started this topic, she had already considered this. However, she did not dare to dream big. At this moment, even after she had heard Joshua say the word husband, she could not still scarcely believe it. She stared at the man in front of her. The more she stared, the more she wanted to laugh. As her mouth twitched, her injuries stretched in pain. Thus, she had to keep her face straight. Then, she said tentatively, Mr. Joshua, actually, you don't have to be so polite. She lowered her head and continued, I only went to rescue Cheryl because I really like her. I did not mean to... I did not mean to obtain your compassion and sympathy, she thought. Joshua's attitude toward her had changed from his usual coldness to a sudden gentleness which made her feel extremely uncomfortable. Joshua narrowed his eyes. It turned out that this girl wasn't as naive as he thought she was. She had already understood his intentions. However, she kept making witty quips to defuse any awkward situation with the aim of pushing him even farther away. He frowned. He could almost feel a layer of darkness beginning to form around his heart. He wanted to say something, but stopped when he saw the girl's anxious gaze. All of the emotions he was feeling were stuck within him, so he kept opening and closing his mouth repeatedly. Finally, he said, You can call me by my name. Your name? Rachel was dumbfounded again. Was he compromising? She widened her eyes and was slightly dazed. Then, she realized that Joshua was eagerly looking at her. That expression, it was as though she coughed and said, <clears throat> Joshua, yes. He was indeed smiling. The both of them stared at each other's faces intently. 
For some time, a curious silence filled the room. Over the time, Rachel and Joshua had interacted with each other. There had been many moments of silence. Furthermore, they were almost always awkward silences. However, right now, the silence that was permeating the room created a somewhat sweet atmosphere instead. She could not help but want to laugh due to her embarrassment. However, every time her lips twitched, she felt a twinge of pain on her face. She hurriedly tensed up her face. The expression she had of wanting to smile, but being unable to do so, made Joshua's lips twitch as well. Then, he suddenly started laughing, a grin on his face. First, he laughed softly. However, as he laughed, he raised his head. When he saw the expression of astonishment on Rachel's face, he could not help but laugh uproariously. Rachel sat on the hospital bed, completely speechless. This man, was he showing off the fact that he could smile while she couldn't? This was absolutely outrageous. At this moment, Anne and Cheryl were together standing outside the room. Both of them had confused expressions on their faces. Anne turned her head and said, Cheryl, did I hear wrongingly? Is Joshua actually laughing? Since that day eight years ago, no smile had crossed his face until today. Anne's gaze gradually softened, and after a while, she began to smile. I was afraid that Joshua wasn't taking his relationship with sweet Rachel seriously, but now I'm finally reassured. Episode 73 Emma meets Anthony. As a wide-eyed Rachel watched Joshua smile, the door to the hospital room was pushed open. Anne walked in with Cheryl in tow. Cheryl bit her lip and also walked in. Her eyes were red, and the moment she entered, she could not help but burst into tears. Rachel, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I did not know that he was that kind of person. Rachel lifted her head when she heard this. Anne quickly added, All right, it's our good fortune that nothing bad happened this time. However, this incident has also taught us that people we meet online sometimes are not who they say they are, which is why we must all be extraordinarily alert when surfing the internet. Don't ever do something like this again. Cheryl nodded and then walked to the side. As she lowered her head silently, tears continued to roll down her face. Rachel looked at her. She understood how Cheryl was currently feeling. She was definitely extremely upset. However, she still felt that Cheryl had fared better than her. At least she had been able to clearly see what kind of man she had entered into an online relationship with. At least she had understood that he had ulterior motives for getting to know her. But what about Rachel herself? Why had Robert suddenly not shown up to the agreed upon meeting? What exactly had happened to Robert? Until now, nobody had given her a satisfactory explanation for this. In reality, after what happened, she had thought about it for a long time. Ultimately, she could only think of one reason. If there was something that could have made Robert to test her, it had to have been that incident after all. She lowered her head and looked at her bandaged right arm. Even though Rachel's injuries looked serious, in fact, the thugs that had beaten her were not professional fighters. Hence, no bones were broken and she was able to settle her hospital discharge paperwork after only three days. During this time, Joshua had practically stayed with her at the hospital every single day. Neither of them spoke much. Rachel scrolled through her Instagram when she was bored, whereas Joshua kept browsing his script. A strange silence had filled the entire room completely. So the nurses looked at both of them confusingly when they came in to sweep the floor. 
After three days, she moved back home. She once again received a phone call from Anthony. Emma, you did not attend the live streaming event three days ago. Tell me, what have you been doing this entire time? Do you know how many times you've canceled on me? Rachel hurriedly said, I'm sorry, Anthony. Anthony sighed and said, Actually, I don't understand you at all. Nowadays, female casters are paid quite handsomely. Some female esports casters are even making almost $2 million a year. You could have made it too if you had just been more dedicated to becoming a successful female caster. Rachel smiled. Anthony immediately continued. You're quite popular right now. I guarantee that if you are willing to show your face when you live stream, your popularity will shoot through the roof. You could become a respected figure in the live streaming world. If you continue to laze about and only live stream irregularly like you are doing now, you wouldn't earn more. After Rachel heard his words, she fell silent for a while before saying eventually, I can't show my face. It was not that she did not want to or that she did not dare to, but it was because she was not able to. When Anthony heard this, he stopped pressuring her. Over the past couple of years, he had broached this topic many times. Instead, he immediately said, There is an esports match this afternoon. Are you going to attend the live stream? Rachel knew that she had stood Anthony up many times now. Thus, she instantly said, I'm going. I'll go now. After hanging up, she stared at the dressing table in the master bedroom. She looked at herself in the mirror and saw that her face was still swollen. She picked up a mask and a hat and she put them on firmly. Just as she was about to go outside, Joshua suddenly pushed open the door. When he saw how she was dressed, he froze for a second before asking, Where are you going? Rachel jumped in fright. Hadn't Joshua left earlier today to attend a meeting? Why was he back so early? Could she actually leave dressed like that? She coughed, her eyes spinning wildly, and said softly, There is a piece of news I need to uncover back at the news agency. I'm rushing over now. Joshua's eyes darkened and said commandingly, I'm not allowing you to go out. Rachel. Rachel raised her head and said, Mr. Joshua, before she could finish speaking, he raised his eyebrows. So she immediately changed how she was addressing him. Joshua, could you not interfere in my affairs when it comes to working? We've discussed this issue before. The terms are even written in our mutual contract. Joshua was intending to make her stay by hook or by crook, but he suddenly remembered that she used to be extremely hardworking when she worked, mostly for his sake. If he forced her to stay, would she be unhappy? Joshua pursed his lips and said, Take care of yourself. Rachel's eyes brightened and immediately said sweetly, all right, Joshua, don't worry. I will definitely leave in one piece and come back in one piece as well. She even bowed mischievously to him. Then she ran downstairs as he curled his lips into an irresistible smile when he saw the happy expression on her face. However, he was still worried about her. Joshua paused for a while before going downstairs and driving his car out of the villa. He then saw Rachel walking in front of him. He thought that she would hail a cab, but instead, she walked to the nearest bus stop and to his surprise, boarded a bus. Joshua frowned as he reacted to what had just happened. Did she always take public transport when she went to work at this time of the day? He followed the bus by car and eventually arrived at a residential area. Just as he was about to drive inside, his phone suddenly rang. Santiago's voice emanated from the other end. Joshua, sir, I've got some news regarding Emma today. She wants to attend the live streaming event. I'm going to stop her right now. 
Joshua silently nodded in affirmation. However, just as he was intending to speak, Santiago continued. However, guess who I just saw? Joshua froze and said, Who? You, of course. Joshua, sir, why are you driving to the entrance to this residential area? Are you also here to persuade Emma? Persuade Emma? Joshua froze again. As he turned around, he saw Santiago parking his car at a nearby spot. He hung up and parked his car at the side of the road. Santiago ran over to him eagerly. Joshua said preemptively, Why are you here? Santiago pointed at the residential area and said, I heard that Emma always live streams with Anthony, and Anthony always streams from his own home. Emma is really quite mysterious. Until now, nobody has found out her identity. I realized that the only way our management company will be able to sign a contract with her will be through Anthony. I already have Anthony's address. In a while, I'll directly confront him inside his own home. Joshua, sir, are you coming with me? Joshua shrugged and nodded casually. Santiago opened the car door for him and said, Joshua, sir, if you are coming with me, let me tell you something first. Don't forget, Emma never reveals her face when she live streams. Thus, she could be rather unattractive in person. However, in this day and age, even the most unattractive person can look somewhat decent with a bit of makeup. Hence, I'm guessing that Emma might not look too good. Once you see her in person, don't show a disdained expression on your face. As he finished speaking, Joshua looked at him coldly. Santiago immediately shut his mouth up. Both of them walked towards the residential area. Once they arrived at Anthony's house, they rang the doorbell. Almost instantly, someone opened the door. In the past, when Rachel used to live stream with Anthony, it had always been at Anthony's house. She wasn't willing to appear in front of the public, so Anthony was in charge of paying her. Hence, even though she was quite popular due to her secret identity, in reality, her earnings from live streaming were rather small. At most, her income from doing this could only improve her living standards by a little. She could only do a few live streams a month. Furthermore, she never accepted interviews or advertising requests. As Anthony adjusted his microphone, he asked her, I really don't know why you even live stream in the first place. Why did she live streamed? Rachel smirked and said, Because it's interesting, of course. Anthony momentarily froze and said, Interesting? Yeah, I like to play video games after all. Rachel said simply, choosing to give a short, concise replies. However, Anthony was suddenly in the mood for conversing, which is why he started rambling. I also like video games. Lately, I play the game I like the most is Cliff of Love. It's a classic video game, which might be why its player count is slowly dwindling. Even though many games today have better graphics and animation, I still think that Cliff of Love is a classic that won't grow old. After hearing his spiel, Rachel nodded. Anthony continued, Have you played Cliff of Love before? Before Rachel could reply, he mumbled to himself, Let me see. When Cliff of Love was still a popular video game, you were probably only starting high school, right? You must have had Cliff of Schoolwork, which is why you probably didn't have much time to play the game. Let me tell you, if you have the chance, you should definitely try out Cliff of Love. It's quite fun. Cliff of Love. Rachel smiled. Anthony noticed that there were still five minutes before the live stream began. Thus, he spoke again. Even though nowadays some players get the gods of gaming because of their gaming prowess, the real god of gaming and the one who started it all was a player from Cliff of Love. That player, called Robert, would definitely be the best player in the world if he still played some of these modern games today. Rachel momentarily froze and said, You know Robert? Her heart suddenly jolted. This was the first time she heard anyone mention the name Robert after so many years. 
Anthony was slightly older than her. Back when Clip of Love was still popular, he should have been at university. Did he know Robert's identity or where he was at? As she thought of Robert, her heart started beating wildly. Only then did she realize she was still holding on to a person that she thought she had forgotten due to how much she had thought of him the past few days. Anthony delightedly said, Of course not. I've only heard of him in passing. You might not know this, but during those days, Robert's group was practically invincible. Every member of his team was extremely good at the game. There was even one member of the group who used the nickname Sweet Rachel, and she often played. Let me tell you, she was a legendary player in the game. Even if we ignored how good Robert was, Sweet Rachel was also extremely proficient at the game. Other than Robert, I haven't seen anyone who was better at that game than she was. Rachel's lips twitched. Anthony clearly misread her expression as he said, Don't give me that look. This sweet Rachel really did play like a pro. She was extremely good at the game and there were many players who envied her. We were also mesmerized by her gaming skills. Rachel blushed profusely. She felt extremely embarrassed to be complimented right to her face. Just as she was intending to speak, they suddenly heard the doorbell ring. Anthony stood up and immediately opened the door. Who is it? Is it the delivery man? As he finished speaking, he heard Santiago's voice. Hello, I'm looking for Emma. Episode 74 Meeting Emma as there was only one minute before the live stream began, Rachel sat at her seat idly. However, when she suddenly heard a familiar voice emanating from the entrance, she jumped up in shock. She quickly turned her head and immediately slammed the door of the main bedroom where she was currently at. As a male live streamer, Anthony definitely wanted to enter the entertainment industry as well, which was why he paid a lot of attention to entertainment news. Obviously, he knew who Santiago was. However, more importantly, the man standing behind Santiago, wearing sunglasses and a mask, could that actually be Joshua? He felt woozy just from looking at the people who had just appeared in front of him. Finally, he intentionally shifted away from the doorway and stuttered, P please, please enter. Before he could finish speaking, he heard a door slam shut behind him. Instantly, as if by reflex, he decisively blocked the front door. He widened his eyes and looked at Santiago. That, I, uh, please wait here for a while. Let me see whether Emma is willing to meet the both of you. He had almost forgotten that Rachel promised that she would live stream with him, provided he agreed to the condition that she would not have to reveal her face on air. Furthermore, Anthony was not allowed to expose her location to the public, nor release any photographs of her. Santiago had initially thought that when the other party recognized him, the other party would respectfully invite him inside. However, was he actually being denied entry right now? Could it be that this bastard standing in front of him actually did not know who he was? He frowned and felt as though his ego had been damaged. Maybe you don't know who I am. I'm Santiago. The man still blocked at the front door. Did he really not know who Santiago was? His ego was totally bruised. Santiago continued speaking. I am Joshua Taylor's secretary. The man kept blocking the door. Santiago. Santiago moved aside exposing Joshua. Even if you don't know who I am, surely you know who he is, right? However, he could not believe that the other party still stood in front of the door, even after glancing at Joshua. Santiago. Santiago instantly felt a sense of relief. If this guy wouldn't even show some respect to Joshua, then he shouldn't feel bad that he wasn't being shown respect either. He laughed and said, go and ask Emma. 
Only then did Anthony nod. He turned around and walked into the bedroom. After conversing for a while, he came back to them and said, Emma says that since the live stream is about to start, she won't be able to talk with you at this moment. Thus, could both of you wait outside for a while? Anthony felt embarrassed as he said this. Most live streams took at least an hour. Did she expect them to wait outside for an hour? By saying this, Emma was actually refusing to meet with them after all. Given what Anthony knew about them, he was certain that there was no way they would agree to this. Indeed, once he finished speaking, Santiago's expression had totally changed. He knew it. They were finished. Santiago was indeed angry. Just as he was about to speak, Joshua said softly, Fine. Santiago. Anthony. Had they both just imagined what he had said in their heads? Joshua Taylor had just said, what? Rachel was hiding in the bedroom, feverently checking the situation outside. When she heard him agree, her entire body froze. Actually, she had told them to wait outside because she wanted to create some trouble for them. Based on what she knew about Santiago's attitude and Joshua's ego, she had expected them to immediately turn around and walk away. If they did so, everything would be resolved. However, why had they agreed to her conditions? Furthermore, looking at the expressions on their faces, she knew that they had no intention to leave. She was now trapped inside the room. If only she could sprout a pair of wings and fly away. Anthony was absolutely dumbfounded. Did Joshua really intend to wait outside his home for an entire hour? Anthony truly wanted to invite them inside. However, after recalling Emma's instructions, he could only smile awkwardly before closing the door. He turned around and entered the bedroom. Emma, you're acting too much like a diva. Many management companies had sent people to find Emma, most likely due to her mysterious identity and heightened popularity. They wanted to convince her to join their roster of performers. Rachel had rejected them all. However, the people that were here now were Santiago and Joshua Taylor. Rachel felt even more flustered than Anthony at this stunning development. How could she resolve this situation? She bit her lip and sighed. <sighs> she looked at the time. There was no more time to dilly-dally. Let's start streaming first, she said. The people waiting outside were causing her to feel more stressed. If she really made them wait outside for an hour, these high-profile entertainment figures might not agree to wait patiently after all. Perhaps they would even decide to leave before the live stream ended. After thinking of this, Rachel calmed down considerably. They were currently live streaming an eSports competitive match. One of the teams was called United Ruling the World, which was composed of veteran players, and they had come in first in a previously ranked match. The other team was called We Love the Dead. It was a relatively new group composed of younger players. The oldest player in the group was only 18 years old, and he also happened to be one of this year's underdog players. The captain of We Love the Dead had the username Zombie Leader. He liked playing aggressive characters and was very good at controlling them. He had led his teams to victory after victory, culminating in the team's participation in the semifinals. Today, they were fighting for one of the two spots in the finals. Anthony and Rachel stared at the match taking place before their eyes and started the live stream. Anthony immediately said, United Ruling the World is employing their usual strategy of sending one member of their team to fight monsters, which boosts the power levels of the entire team. We Love the Dead, on the other hand. Rachel carried on at a suitable moment. As the match progresses, we can see that both teams have started their head-to-head -head brawl. The two esports casters complimented each other nicely, and their fever and passion shone through when they spoke. As the time passed, the competition started to heat up. Suddenly, We Love the Dead Central Tower was suddenly attacked by the enemy team. Anthony anxiously said, 
We Love the Dead chose to focus their efforts on the middle lane. However, United Ruling the World had obviously seen through their tactics, and thus they shifted their positions from the edges of the map to the center. Even though We Love the Dead is within an inch of victory, they currently have no option but to rush back to provide aid and assistance. But look! Oh my goodness! Zombie Leader is the only player returning back to their base. That's so conceited of him. The results are clear. As he finished, Rachel instead rebutted his words, saying, I don't really agree with you. Zombie Leader is returning to base alone because he has already predicted that this exact scenario would happen. As she finished speaking, she saw that We Love the Dead had already sent out their special soldiers. Zombie Leader returned to base, his blood gauge full. Furthermore, thanks to the boost from the special soldiers, he was able to fend off three players at once. It was an absolute bloodbath. At the same time, his teammates struck the opponent's central tower. The match ended with We Love the Dead as the winner. Anthony exclaimed, He's so young, yet so capable. He has so much courage. Any normal team would have chosen to return to base as a group to mitigate the danger at their home base. They would have left the attacking force later. Rachel smiled. However, before she could breathe a sigh of relief, she suddenly remembered the people waiting outside. The match had ended 20 minutes earlier due to the daring plan of We Love the Dead. Could Joshua still be waiting outside? With this in mind, she suddenly stood up and crept to the peephole of the room door. As she looked out, she was met with a pair of big eyes. This gave Rachel a shock and she moved back. She heard Santiago speak. Is she not done? The live stream looks like it's about to end. They were actually still there. And they were even watching the live stream. They were seriously going overboard. Rachel walked around the room in a panic. One second, she was touching her face. The other, she was running her hand through her hair. Someone knocked on the room door and Santiago's voice came over. Emma, I know your live stream has ended. Hurry up and open the door. A while ago, they had requested them to wait. So it didn't make sense to refuse to open the door now. Rachel stared at the door and clenched her teeth. She hid in one of the rooms and said, Anthony, go and open the door. Anthony could only walk over and open the door. Santiago and Joshua walked inside impatiently. Santiago sized up the layout of the room while Joshua's gaze fell on the room door. Santiago questioned, where's Emma? Anthony casually said, she's here, relax. After he said so, he realized Santiago was staring at him in fear. Is Emma actually a uh, transsexual? Anthony. Anthony coughed and said, <clears throat> I'm Anthony. They knew that Anthony and Emma worked together to hold the live stream. Santiago then patted his chest and exclaimed, You gave me a shock. Where's Emma? After he asked, the door opened. Everyone looked over and Santiago got quite shocked. What the hell? Joshua followed Santiago's gaze and saw a woman. The woman had an unkempt appearance and a dirty face. Wait, it was not that her face was dirty. It was that she had applied a thick layer of makeup powder on her face. Her eyes had thick eye makeup that had been messily applied. Her makeup made her look like a ghost, so it was completely impossible to see her original features. Furthermore, she donned loose and large woolen pajamas. She walked out of the room, half awake, and when she saw the two men, she rasped, Hi, I am Emma. Santiago. Joshua. Even Anthony was shocked by her appearance. Usually people would dress up prettily when meeting their managers. But Emma? Why was she so weird? 
Rachel happily sat down, believing that they would leave after seeing how she looked. It would be so unimaginably if they decide to sign her, even though she was a weirdo. Santiago stared at her intensely, thinking that it was too strange. Rachel openly allowed both of them to size her up and said, What are you all here for? As she said this, she even stuck out her fingers and scratched her legs. She looked extremely sleazy. Santiago. Santiago hinted at Joshua with a look and said, Mmm, we just came here to take a look. If there is nothing else, we'll, we'll, we'll take our leave. He stood up when he finished speaking. He would have to be a moron if he still wanted to sign such a person. Unexpectedly, when he stood up, Santiago heard Joshua speak. Our company, QC Media Company, wants to sign a contract with you and make you one of our artists. May I ask if you have thought about this? Santiago almost fell on the floor in shock. What was wrong with Joshua? Akin to Santiago, Rachel had almost fallen too after hearing Joshua's words. What the hell? Joshua still wanted to sign her despite the terrible image she showed? Could it be that this guy had recognized her? Episode 75 Oh, Narcissism Rachel widened her eyes and stared at Joshua. But he was expressionless, and she couldn't see any emotion in his black eyes. If he had recognized her, he wouldn't have been so polite. So, did it mean that he hadn't recognized her? Rachel couldn't help but ask. Mr. Joshua, why do you want to sign me? She pointed at herself and continued, After all, I am rather ugly. I am unfit to appear in the public. Only my voice is attractive for an audience. After saying so, she coughed violently and continued, <clears throat> Even I caught the flu today. Santiago and Joshua had heard her voice before. She was completely fearless when live streaming since a person's voice could be slightly modified with the right processing. When one talks over the phone, there is also a slight difference in the voice heard. She was only afraid to be recognized in real life. There was no change in Joshua's expression. He plainly spoke, It's because I like to game. His voice was mellow, and deep, which made people feel really comfortable. When Rachel heard his words, she was slightly taken aback and she suddenly remembered a conversation with Robert years ago. She had asked Robert, Robert, why are you so good at gaming? It's because I like to game. He had been really powerful in the game simply because of him liking it. And now, Joshua wanted to sign her as an esports caster due to his love of gaming? She raised an eyebrow and heard him continue. I've heard your live stream a few times. You have a broad knowledge of the game, and you understand how we work. You will become an outstanding esports caster. Rachel was delighted to hear him praising her, and she replied humbly, You flatter me. Joshua glanced at Santiago. Santiago immediately came to his senses. Although he didn't know why Joshua was insisting on signing this woman in his company, he had to follow his commands unconditionally. He directly asked, So, what are your demands? Do you have any? Demands? Nope. Rachel answered with a grin. Santiago nodded. He knew that no one would reject it if Joshua asked personally. So, when will we sign the contract? When have I agreed to sign the contract? Her words made Santiago want to laugh, really badly. And she continued saying, I have never wanted to become a star in the live stream world. I live streamed just to earn some extra money. Thus, 
I won't sign anything with any management companies. Santiago asked, You wouldn't even consider it if it's our company that offered? As she could tell, they were both going to disagree until the end. She could only take that indirect method. Um, could you allow me to consider it then? Santiago nodded and took out his phone, saying, I will add you on WhatsApp then. Like this, it will be more convenient for us to contact each other. When Rachel was about to agree, Joshua spoke. Search for 186XXX. Santiago was stunned, and Rachel was even more stunned. That phone number was Joshua's. But with him staring at her, she didn't dare to go against him. She had no option but to log on to her other WhatsApp account and add him. Santiago and Joshua were heading back, but when they reached the doorstep, Santiago looked back at the person behind him. He didn't know why, but he effably felt that Emma was kind of similar to Rachel. And following his impulse, he asked, Emma, do you know a female reporter named Rachel? After Santiago finished his sentence, Joshua's gaze dimmed. Rachel looked at both of them. She suddenly smiled and said, Of course. Isn't she the famous brave female hero who fights for justice? When she ended her sentence, there was a strange silence in the room. Anthony covered his face. He had never seen someone so narcissistic. Santiago curved his lips. Wasn't she just a reporter? Why did Emma adore her so much? Even Joshua couldn't help but slightly curve his lips. He didn't speak, but his eyes were sparkling. Rachel acted as if she hadn't noticed their looks and continued speaking. As part of the entertainment industry, we are bound to pay more attention to some famous reporters. I've actually taken notice of this reporter named Rachel. Joshua had always thought that it was inappropriate for her to invade others' privacy as a reporter. Thus, she had to take this chance to put in good words for herself. She stuck out her long fingers and said, This Rachel has been in the industry for just half a year, and she has already dug out so many influential articles. Firstly, there were two female artists who were fighting for the female lead. One of them turned to underhand means to win the position. She reported that incident. Secondly, not long ago, didn't she report on Monica and Matthew? Thus, there are both good and bad reporters. This Rachel is a good one. She's definitely the hero of the new age. The spread of evil and all demons and monsters can't escape her eyes. She wanted to continue, but Anthony had coughed and cut her off. Rachel looked back at him and asked, Are you not feeling well today? Anthony. Santiago asked, How did you know that this reporter's name is Rachel? I believe her pen name is something else. Even if you did know her, you could only know her pen name. Dang it. Santiago has set up a verbal trap for her. But she would rather die than confess that she was Emma. Rachel continued lying through her teeth. It's because I've been friends with her spiritually for a long time. And she's my idol. Of course I would know. She crossed her arms and said, She's such a good girl. If she's married, her husband should cherish her as well. She has many small flaws, but she's kind and magnanimous. <clears throat> Anthony could not take it any longer. He took a step forward and said, Goodbye. Take care. Santiago then glanced at Joshua. Joshua's expression remained unreadable, but it showed a little happiness. He nodded and took the lead to leave. Santiago followed Joshua down the stairs. When he reached the first floor, he spoke. I feel that Emma is similar to Miss Rachel, but if the way she acts is totally different from Miss Rachel's, Miss Rachel is so quiet, but Emma is cheerful and funny. 
Joshua. How was Rachel a quiet person in any way? They both walked to the exit of the housing estate and entered their respective cars. After a while, Santiago realized that Joshua hadn't started his car. He walked over and knocked on the car window. Joshua, sir, is there anything wrong? Joshua replied, no. Then why aren't you leaving? You can leave first. Santiago asked, you still have something to do? Yes. Santiago thought, so would it kill you to talk a little bit more about it? He sighed deeply and nodded. I will stay to accompany you then. He was a famous actor after all. It wouldn't be good if someone spotted him. He stood by the car and lit a cigarette. After he took a breath, he casually asked, Joshua, sir, who are you waiting for? For whom I'm supposed to. Fine, take it as if I never asked. Rachel was only relieved after Joshua and Santiago had left the room. She lay on the sofa, out of strength. Anthony stared at her with wide eyes. Emma, I think that there's something wrong with you today. Rachel rolled her eyes at him. Anthony continued speaking. Even if you wanted to reject Santiago, you didn't have to make yourself look this awful, right? It was so horrible that I could hardly bear to look at it. Rachel sighed and said, There's no other way because I'm such a beauty. If they had seen me, what should I do if they forced me to sign the contract? Anthony replied, Would it kill you not to be narcissistic for a day? Rachel stood up, smiling, and entered the room to get changed. This room of Anthony was their workspace. As his sole income came from live streaming, there were a lot of clothes in the room. After Rachel got changed, she washed her face and walked out of the room. Anthony was watching the game replay. When he heard her steps, he couldn't help but sigh and said, Emma, the zombie leader is really too arrogant. His move was so dangerous. This game usually lasts about 40 minutes. Why did he have to end it in 20? Rachel casually replied. It was in order to prevent the players of United's ruling the world from competing with their abilities in the later part of the match, after leveling up. And we love the dead, only zombie leader is skilled. Anthony nodded and said, that's true. They have to take advantage of the opportunities they get in order to win. Damn, there really are not many people that are as skilled as Robert used to be nowadays. Recalling the past. Stop! Rachel interrupted him. I'm leaving. Eh, why didn't you ask me about Robert? Rachel walked towards the door and added, Do you even know if I asked you? You definitely know less than me. After she changed her shoes, she was about to make her way out, but she heard Anthony's voice again. Eh, what are you talking about? Let me tell you a secret. Rachel turned back. Anthony secretively said, I don't know Robert, but I know sweet Rachel. Rachel was stumped. Rachel almost spitted her saliva out. What? This dude. Had he recognized her? Anthony smiled smugly and said, Huh, you're stunned, right? Let me tell you, I'm really familiar with sweet Rachel. His words made Rachel twitch her lips. The boasting skills of this dude were indeed becoming stronger. She laughed and turned around, walking towards the door. Aren't you curious about what happened to sweet Rachel? Anthony looked at Rachel back and asked again, Do you really not want to know what sweet Rachel is doing now? Rachel waved her hand and entered the elevator. What was sweet Rachel doing now? She had obviously become a reporter. Otherwise, should she still be gaming? Continue gaming. When this thought appeared, Rachel's expression dimmed. Robert. Did he hate her because of that matter? 
Had he tricked her because... When that thought appeared, it spiraled around her brain crazily. She shook her head, waved away the thoughts, and once again looked forward. Robert has already become your past, Rachel. You have to stop thinking about him. Ding! The elevator arrived. She walked out of the building and walked towards the exit of the housing estate. After taking two steps, she suddenly heard someone excitedly shouting for her. Miss Rachel! When she lifted her head, she saw Santiago, who was standing in the distance. And her gaze landed on Joshua, who was in the car. Episode 76 Things are changing. Rachel was immediately on guard as she widened her eyes. Had they both been waiting here just to intercept her? She was still in a state of shock when she heard Santiago exclaim excitedly, Miss Rachel, why are you here? After he ended his sentence, he turned and looked at Joshua, who was seated in the car. Santiago immediately understood why Rachel was here. Rachel swallowed her saliva in shock and approached them. She smiled and said, This is such a coincidence. Why are the both of you here? Joshua didn't answer her question and instead replied with another. You are here to... Dig for news? Rachel giggled and replied, I... Yes. I heard that Emma was doing a live stream here and I came to take a look. Did you find any news? No. I can tell you the house number. Rachel was absolutely stumped. So why was this man so nice suddenly? He wanted to give her the house number for her to get news of Emma? She remained on her guard as she stared at him and said, Um, it's all right. Joshua didn't make things difficult for her and instead looked forward, asking, Where are you going now? Rachel subconsciously replied, Home. Oh, get in the car. Rachel did not know what to say. Did he want to send her home? Why did it feel like reality was quite unreal? She walked to the passenger seat, got onto the car, and sat there obediently. However, she constantly stared at Joshua from the corner of her eyes. He had been so nice ever since she had saved Cheryl. His kindness was difficult to ascertain and it made her feel uneasy. She lowered her head and couldn't help but despise herself. She really was one miserable wench. Would she only feel at ease if he continued being mean to her? Rachel shook her head and she only looked forward after she got rid of the nonsensical thoughts. But at that moment, she realized something and said, Mr. Jo Joshua, this isn't the road home. Joshua looked at her plainly and said, Yes. Rachel was speechless. What did he mean by yes? This dude measured his words too much. He was truly cold on the outside, but passionate inside. As she was criticizing him internally, she heard him say, We're going to eat. Going to eat? Did he want to bring her to meet his friends? Rachel immediately sat up and looked at her clothes. She was wearing a woolen shirt, a pair of jeans, and white shoes. Could she really meet his friends while being dressed up so casually? She was instantly on tenterhooks. However, Joshua didn't speak. It should be fine, right? His car arrived at a private restaurant. Joshua alighted from the car and he walked forward with her following closely behind. They both entered a private room. It was then that she realized that it was only them eating. She was overwhelmed by his favor, but at the same time, she feared it. He had purposely waited outside the apartment just to fetch her for food. This guy, did he know she was Emma? She clenched her teeth and looked at him with vigilance. Joshua, you're treating me? 
Joshua nodded and said, Yes. Why? Joshua lifted his head and said, Take a seat. Rachel obediently sat down and continued staring at him. Then Joshua continued, I would like to ask you for a favor. Joshua's asking for help? That was so rare. Rachel's eyes suddenly lightened up. What? My company wants to sign Emma, and she seems like she likes you very much. Help me convince her. Rachel was absolutely stumped. Rachel stared at Joshua unbelievingly. She felt as though she had just lifted a huge rock, only to drop it on her foot. She opened and closed her mouth repeatedly, trying to find an excuse to reject him. However, after looking at the determined expression on his face, all the excuses were stuck in her mouth. After thinking for a while, she said stubbornly, I have never met her before. However, she has admired you for quite some time, so I think that she would be extremely happy if she met you. Joshua emphasized the word admired, causing Rachel to desperately wish that she would have bitten her own tongue. She stared at Joshua, trying to figure out whether he was saying this because he had to do something about her identity, or whether it was pure coincidence. However, this person had a skilled poker face. His expression remained blank, so she was unable to deduce anything from it. Fine. She would cross that bridge when she got to it. She said casually, Let me try then. Joshua shot a glance at her before slowly lowering his head. He then said, I'm begging you. When Rachel heard this, she raised her head astonishingly. He was begging her? This was the most polite sentence that Joshua had ever said to her. She blinked and could not help but say, Is Emma that important to you? At this moment, the compartment door was pushed open. The waiter entered and placed the dishes they were lifting on the table, causing the conversation to stop. After the waiter had left, Rachel picked up her fork and knife, intending to take the most tender pieces of grilled fish and butter sauce. However, another pair of forks shot out in front of hers and grabbed it before she could get to it. Rachel immediately froze. She lifted her head, only to see Joshua clamp his fork on the piece of fish. Oh well, she wasn't as fast as him after all. She was just not this destined to taste this delicacy. As she thought of this, a pair of forks appeared in front of her face. She lifted her head bewilderingly and watched Joshua put the piece of his grilled fish on his plate. Rachel. Rachel stared at the piece of fish and looked at Joshua cautiously. What are you doing? People who were unreasonably kind were probably also hiding dark intentions as well. Actually, Joshua did not mean to cause trouble for her. However, why was she looking so bewildered, even though he was the one who was treating her to a meal? It was as though she had the impression that he had some sort of evil intention toward her. Especially at this moment. Why did a small piece of yellow croaker make her so nervous? As though it was sharpened blade of a dagger. He could only continue their previous conversation. I'll continue to wait for the good news from Emma. Rachel. Why was this person so sure that Emma would choose him? Rachel lowered her head and stared at the piece of fish. Actually, she was really happy that Joshua wanted to sign her. She had fantasized countless times before about working alongside Joshua. He was her idol after all. However, when this day had finally come, she realized that she was not qualified to work alongside him. She could never reveal her identity to the public. Thus, regardless of how poor she was, she had never thought of entering the entertainment industry. Anthony had always told her that as a female sports e-caster whose popularity was already quite high, as long as she was willing to show her face to the public, he could guarantee that she would earn more than $100,000 a month. However, it was not that she was unwilling to do so. She had already sold her body for money, let alone her face. 
Yet, the fact was that she could absolutely not do so. She picked up the piece of fish with her fork and put it in her mouth. However, she found it relatively bland. Then, she heard Joshua saying, If she causes you any difficulties, let me know. Rachel raised her gaze, but Joshua had already lowered his head and was concentrating on his food. He looked extremely elegant when he ate. She could tell with a single glance that he had been born in a rich family. And the etiquette he displayed had to have been taught from a young age. He must have been born with a golden spoon in his mouth, right? But then, why had Joshua chosen to enter the entertainment industry? Joshua had been born into a wealthy family. Thus, he must have grown up in a rather affluent environment. However, most wealthy people did not look favorably upon celebrities. So why had he entered the entertainment industry? She had never considered these questions. Only when she suddenly thought of this, did she realize that she did not understand him at all. Apart from knowing that he had won a Best Actor award in the past, and that he had arduously worked really hard to progress from a nobody to one of the most popular celebrities today, she knew nothing about him. She did not even know who his father was, or whether he had any siblings. She did not know why Cheryl was bizarrely staying at their villa. Furthermore, he had never shown any intention to explain this to her. Was it because he felt there was no need to explain this to someone he would divorce sooner or later anyway? She recalled the conversation they had on the night they became newlyweds. Always remember your duty. As she thought about this, the small piece of fish she was chewing suddenly turned bitter. She lowered her head and thought for a long while before finally replying. All right. She absently ate the rest of her meal. After they had finished eating, Rachel sat in Joshua's car as it drove towards the villa. On the way, her cell phone suddenly rang. When she picked it up, she realized that the chief editor was calling her. He frowned slightly as she answered the call. The chief editor's voice emanated from the other end, saying, Rachel, Matthew Jensen only slapped you once. So why are you taking leave for so many days? Rachel pursed her lips. The chief editor continued saying, Heh, do you not want to work anymore? Then please hand in your resignation letter. Rachel smiled and said, I'll be coming to work tomorrow. The chief editor humped coldly and said, At least you have some self-awareness. I'm telling you now, you better be working hard on covering Joshua's scoop. When she finished speaking, she immediately hung up. Rachel pursed her lips as she looked at her phone. She could not help but curse out, ah, You old hag! After she finished swearing, she threw her cell phone into her pocket. As she felt a cold gaze directed at her from the side, her body suddenly froze. Damn, how could she have forgotten that she was in Joshua's car? This fellow must have definitely heard her mutterings just now. Ugh. She sat up straight and lowered her head, desperately wishing that she could disappear into thin air. Joshua suddenly said, how do you usually scold me? Rachel replied, Ah, why would I even scold you? Idiot. Are you sure? Rachel replied, Absolutely certain. Only then was Joshua satisfied. When they reached the villa, both of them got out of the car. Before Joshua went into the bathroom with the towel in his hand, he said to her, Contact Emma now. Rachel said, I don't even know how to contact her. Let's continue this conversation once I've figured out how to contact her. When Joshua heard this, he raised his eyebrows and said, Don't you know her Instagram account name? I saw that you had liked one of the posts in her friend group. Rachel. She had liked her secondary account using her primary account. 
That's no big deal. Boo hoo hoo. Before she could reply, Joshua had already entered the bathroom. Oh, God. She angrily sat on the sofa. She definitely had to find a way to cause trouble for him. However, how could Emma reject him while embarrassing him as well? Suddenly, Rachel's eyes brightened. When Joshua walked out, he saw Rachel sitting on the sofa. She was smiling at him, an expression of joy on her face. I have news from Emma. She said in order for her to consider signing a contract with your company, you must first beat her in a video game match. She was sweet Rachel after all. That sweet Rachel who could back up her reputation with her amazing video game skills. Thus, how could Joshua possibly win her? Episode 77 The Insatiable Desires The only person living in this world who could have actually beaten Rachel at playing video games in her prime would have been Robert. One could even say that it had been Robert who caused her to play video games so competently. From the time when she used to play video games casually, to the addiction that she experienced later, to the time that she finally became one of the best video gamers ever, video games had become one of her biggest passions in life. Rachel curled her lips. Even though there were many areas in which she could not hope to match Joshua, playing video games was certainly not one of them. After all, her ability to play video games was one of her strengths. He would be speechless when she had beaten him, right? As she thought about this, she looked at Joshua. He had just finished showering. A towel was wrapped around his waist, exposing his compact abdominal and pectoral muscles. The only source of light in the room came from a dimly lit bedside lamp. His skin glowed brightly because of it. His face looked sharp as a well-carved statue. His appearance was so exquisite that it could anger both mortals and deities alike. His distinct facial features exuded determination. Hence, even though he looked extremely beautiful, he did not exude any femininity at all. Instead, his body exuded a sense of masculinity. The stars were brightly shining outside. Today was a rare day in which there was no fog whatsoever. However, at this moment, Rachel had no time to enjoy the scenery outside. That's because, to her, the star that shone the brightest in the entire world was right in front of her. This star had guided her in the right direction during the darkest days of her life. Thus, she idolized Joshua. Due to this idolization, she felt small and diminutive when facing him. Growing up, she had always felt as though she stood above everybody else. Even if her household was about to collapse, she would never compromise for anybody except for Joshua. Hence, she felt a sense of resentment within her. Now, she would teach him a lesson under the guise of Robert. At least this way, she could regain some dignity. As she thought about this, she became momentarily excited. Later, after she crushed Joshua, would he start crying out of anger? She excitedly looked at him, only to see that he had an apathetic look on his face, causing her to be unable to gauge his feelings. Rachel snickered uncontrollably when she saw his relaxed expression. Go on, keep acting. Later on, you will lose everything even the pants you are wearing. She immersed herself in her thoughts before staring once again at Joshua. Joshua, Robert is a female video game caster. No doubt, she will be extremely good at playing video games. Are you afraid of taking her on? She was purposely asking him whether he dared to play against Robert and not whether he was actually playing because she wanted to purposely antagonize him. She was certain there is no way he would refuse. Instead, he lifted his head. A complicated expression was reflected in his dark eyes. Was he afraid? Just as she thought of this, she heard him reply. All right, when is this going to happen? 
The faster, the better, of course. However, if she started the match right now, wouldn't she blow her cover? Rachel's eyes rolled around in their sockets as she examined the room. How could she prevent him from figuring out that it was her playing the video game match while at the same time allowing her to see him embarrass himself? This was a dilemma indeed. Rachel stood up and walked to the bathroom. I'll arrange the match for tomorrow evening. Once she finished saying that, she closed the door and took off her clothes. As she still had injuries all over her body, she could not shower or bathe. She could only wipe her body with a towel. She did so while looking at herself in the mirror. However, she could not wipe her back, no matter how hard she tried. Just as she was fretting over the problem, the door to the bathroom was suddenly pushed open. A shocked Rachel violently turned her head to look behind her, only to see Joshua walking towards her. Panicked, she hurriedly picked up the towel and wrapped her body with it. Why are you here? Rachel was truly shocked. She had been married to Joshua for almost a month now. Even though they had not been living under the same roof for too long a period, Joshua had been barging into the bathroom without nary a greeting for the past few days. She bit her lip and widened her eyes. Could this guy actually be coming in here to do that with her? However, her body was clearly covered with injuries. It would be unkind of him to think of doing that with her when she was in this state. As she thought of this, she instantly became wearier of him. However, Joshua took a step forward and said, Let me help you. Help her? Help her do what? He grabbed a towel from a nearby bucket, wrung it, and pressed it on her shoulders. Where else should I rub? What was he helping her to wipe her body? Rachel's head began to hurt. This guy was clearly too nice towards her. Was he doing this with nefarious intentions in mind? Joshua saw that she stayed silent for a long time as she kept staring at him with those round eyes of hers. Even though he was covered with a towel, his exquisite shoulders could still be seen. His clavicle looked both attractive and sexy. Her skin was so pale that even the slightest pinch could cause it to swell for a few days. Let alone a beating like the one she had experienced a few days ago. His eyes filled with warmth as he saw the bruises on her body. His actions also became gentler. Suddenly, Rachel snapped back to reality. She swallowed a mouthful of saliva before saying, My back. Joshua walked behind her and instantly pulled the towel away from her body. The action was so fast that Rachel had no time to react. She was about to pick up the towel when she felt his warm, enormous hands grab hold of her shoulder. Then, she heard his voice emanating from her neck area, saying, Don't move. She felt his warm breath near her ear, causing her entire body to freeze. She felt a fiery sensation in her. As the sensation worked its way up her body, she felt nervous. The warmth of the enormous hand on her shoulder felt like it came out of a furnace. Starting from her shoulder, the warmth slowly began to spread her entire body. Due to her nakedness, her shoulders unconsciously tensed up, and she could feel a tightening sensation sucking all of the air from her lungs as she grew increasingly nervous. She felt a hot towel being applied to her back. The heat from the towel activated sensations across her entire body causing her to break out in numerous goosebumps. She felt as though the sensitivity of her body had reached its peak. She could clearly feel his hand gently rubbing her body with the towel. From her neck, the towel worked its way down her spine until it stopped near her tailbone. Rachel's face was burning red as she felt that huge hand inching towards her bottom. She hurriedly stopped him and said, that, that area's been wiped. Joshua's hand paused in midair. He muttered an affirmative. His voice clearly sounded a bit hoarse. Then, his hand passed by her bottom and his other hand let go of her shoulder. 
Rachel's entire body instantly relaxed. She heard him say, It's finished. She obviously knew he had finished. Since you've finished, please get out of here now. Rachel bit her lip and turned her head, only to see that Joshua was directing a fiery gaze at her body. His gaze caused a renewed, fiery sensation to break out all across her body again. Her skin started to turn pink, probably due to her embarrassment. She lowered her head and picked up the towel from the floor. Then she clumsily wrapped it around herself and said, Well, let's go out. As she finished speaking, she turned to run out of the room. However, in her haste, she accidentally tripped. In a panic, she loosened her hand from the towel and used it to grab Joshua instead. The towel around her body was clearly not wrapped tightly. When she let go of it, it immediately slid off her body and fell to the floor. Furthermore, she also accidentally tugged the towel wrapping Joshua's body off of him. Joshua wanted to grab hold of her, but his gaze wavered and he fell down as well. At this point, both Rachel and Joshua were already near the bathroom door. Outside the bathroom door, a thick Parisian carpet laid on the floor. As such, even if they fell onto it, they would not feel any pain at all. However, why did they both feel a body pressing into their own? Especially, at this moment, they were both stark naked. Their skins touched. As her body had been wiped, her body temperature was rather cool. However, his body was flaming hot. When her cool body touched his fiery one, Rachel almost yelled out in shock due to how sensitive her body felt. In fact, when he fell, he had coincidentally fallen on top of her. As they panicked, they somehow still connected to each other. Rachel's heart started thumping wildly she was anxious to the point of suffocation. She swallowed a mouthful of saliva and saw that his head was leaning over. He pressed his warm lips onto her chilly lips. His body scent wafted into her nostrils. He gently kissed her. Once he had finished kissing her, the both of them felt an emotional shift within them as they breathed heavily. She placed her hands on his shoulders. She simultaneously wanted to both push him away from herself and pull her closer to him. As she fretted over this dilemma, she suddenly felt hit by a whirlpool of emotions. Rachel's face immediately turned bright red. She did not dare to look at his face. However, she saw in the corners of her eyes that his ears had turned red as well. Joshua could not have predicted that what started off as a harmless teasing would come back to bite him. He acutely felt something change within his body. Never had he felt something like what he was feeling right now. He desperately wanted to possess and own her body. He knew that he could fulfill his wish with a single action. He also knew that she would not reject him because she had never dared to refuse his advances before. However, this time, as he thought of the bruises on her shapely body, that he had noticed when he was wiping her body just now, he could not help but sigh deeply. As Rachel waited for Joshua to make his next move, she noticed that he had abruptly stopped moving. It seemed as though he was feeling conflicted about something. Finally, after some time, he stood up. As the pressure of his body eased off of her, she felt as though her heart had suddenly turned hollow. Then. She suddenly noticed that he had lifted her into his arms and was currently striding forward until he finally placed her on the bed gently. She hurriedly covered herself with a blanket before staring wide-eyed at him. As his back was facing the light, she could not clearly see the expression on his face. However, as he stood beside the bed, his gaze was similar to one of a wolf might levy at his prey. Rachel tugged the blanket closer to herself. Just as she thought he might swallow her whole, the next second, he suddenly turned around and walked to the side. Rachel inexplicably sighed in relief. 
Even though she did not injure her bones when she was hurt, she still had numerous bruises all over her body. The doctor had even reminded her that she should not be doing any stressful activities for the time being. Joshua clearly wanted to do it with her. However, he managed to control his impulses. Was this because he had taken into consideration the state of her body? Thinking about this warmed her heart considerably. There were times where he did indeed care about her. Hence, she had decided that she would take it slightly easier on him once he had started the video game match. After all, she did not want him to lose too terribly. She buried her head in the blanket. Only her eyes were visible, and she used those eyes to stare at him. He sat on the sofa and closed his eyes, as though he was trying to calm the raging fire within his body. However, the image of a girl's pale body kept flashing across his mind. These thoughts only caused him to feel even more suppressed. Certain parts of his body began to swell with pain. He abruptly stood up and barked a command at Rachel, saying, Contact Emma now. I want to play a match against her immediately. Episode 78 Getting into the game Joshua put on his pajamas, picked up his phone, and said, I will wait for her in the study. After he finished speaking, he walked out. Rachel only came back to her senses after the room door closed. This dude, was he intending to game to divert his attention from his body? Furthermore, he had taken the initiative to leave. Was she able to play against him now? She hurriedly jumped off the bed and casually put on her cliff of love. She found her phone and entered Emma's WhatsApp. Once she had entered successfully, she saw the message from Joshua. Joshua, what are we playing? Rachel gave it a thought. She was sweet Rachel. She had always been good at gaming. Although she was the most familiar with Cliff of Love, since he had the title of best actor, she should give him a chance. Thus, she replied, Emma, you can decide. What games do you usually play? Joshua, Cliff of Love then. Rachel was stunned. He was usually sucking it. Does that mean he chose Cliff of Love or that he usually played Cliff of Love? The game that she was most familiar with was Cliff of Love. Would she be taking advantage if they competed in Cliff of Love? Emma, I'm the best at Cliff of Love. Do you want to change the game? Joshua, it's all right. Indeed, all men were proud creatures. Emma, okay then, one on one? Joshua agreed. After thinking for a while, she continued, Emma, my username in Cliff of Love is Unforgettable Love. Add me as a friend. After she sent the message, she entered the game. Unforgettable Love was her sub account. She had created two accounts when she used to play. After she logged in, she got a notification from the game and it hinted that someone had added her as a friend. His username was Joshua and he was only level one. If Joshua really liked to play Clip of Love, this had to be his sub-account. Moreover, it looked like he had just created the account. This guy, could he really play? Forget it. She would just give him a chance later so he wouldn't explode after losing. After she added him, they entered the one-on-one -on -one mode. The game's purpose was to destroy the main tower. Whoever destroyed it, won. The match would be carried how Cliff of Love was usually played. So they started off at level zero. Rachel sent him an in-game message. Unforgettable Love. When I used to play, I always did it on the computer. And now there's even a mobile version. But I don't feel as adapt as I did on the computer. Joshua. Same. Rachel. Did he mean that he agreed to how she felt? Or did he think that playing on the computer and the phone feels the same? Damn it, would he die from speaking a few more words? Rachel decided to ignore it. 
She exercised her wrist as the game was loading. She planned on just teasing him for 20 minutes and achieving her victory in 30 minutes. The game started. She hurriedly picked up her phone, and while she stared at the familiar interface, she realized her full potential. As she moved forward, she started off by killing small monsters to level up. She also killed Joshua's minions. But she was already at the center of the map. Why wasn't Joshua here yet? She looked at the map, but she didn't see any traces of Joshua's movements. She couldn't help but remain on the spot, stunned. It was a one-on-one -on -one battle. There were almost no bushes or places to hide. Then where was he hiding? Where exactly was Joshua hiding? Actually, he wasn't hiding anywhere, as he hadn't even walked out of the base. At that moment, he was in a daze, staring at the familiar game interface. A few years ago, he had come into contact with online games through his phone. He was in high school then, and at the time, he thought that school had been relatively easy, but family problems vexed him. Thus, he started to come in contact with this game. He felt that killing people was really satisfying. He didn't think about it much then. He just found a few people who played the game well and formed a team to join competitions. He never expected himself to become famous. And sometime later, he met sweet Rachel. That day, he turned on the computer and went to get himself a cup of water. After he came back, he realized that his cat had clicked the mouse and he had actually entered a random match. The system had randomly assigned him a team. He had originally intended to quit the match, but his teammates weren't online yet, and the game had already started. Thus, he decided to continue with the match. He didn't notice Sweet Rachel in the beginning, but he soon realized that every time she revived, she would come to look for him. He thought that she was annoying, and thus killed her time and time again. At the end of the game, he had already killed her 10 times. This idiot, she didn't even level up. She didn't get her teammates to fight alongside her and instead rushed towards him every time she revived. She was a total airhead. He hadn't been playing seriously for that match. So in the later part of the game, he found it annoying and decided to end it as soon as possible. After the game, he went to the bathroom. Yet when he came back, he realized that his cat had once again entered him into a new match. He felt really annoyed then. It was really boring to play with a bunch of idiots. Thus, he decisively quit the match. After he quit the match, his teammates logged in, so they played a ranked match together. Only after the ranked match ended, he realized that he had received a private message. He recognized the profile picture. It was Sweet Rachel from the other match. He had not made an effort to remember her. It was just that his memory was too good. She asked him why he had quit the game. He didn't even pause to think and replied, I don't want to be in the same team as an idiot. After this, he just left this person, whom he considered unimportant, in the back of his mind. His self back then would have never expected that this person would actually become his obsession in the future. After that, she tried all ways to contact him and get his attention. Every time he was in a competition, she would always be part of the enemy team. And she targeted him all the time. She didn't try to level up, didn't kill monsters, and just focused on attacking him every single time she revived. With such an idiot in the team, she always lowered the fighting ability of her enemy team. He was really confused on why his opponents would agree to have her in the team when they were actually competing. One day, after he had become friends with her, he asked her why. Her reply brought along bitterness. She said, Robert, you're too evil. I was too small and invisible to catch your attention. I had no choice but to spend my monthly pocket money on buying gold coins. Every time you joined a competition, I would bribe the enemy team. I said that since they won't be able to beat you, I could give them golden coins if they allowed me to join. The way she spoke about the money was totally like no review rich. She spoke as if she had done the right thing. 
Look, you got such a good girlfriend. When will you return me the pocket money I've spent on you? Joshua curved his lips and laughed. It seemed as if his past online had once again appeared before him. Her character was like her. She was always excited and occupied with something. Every time they were in a competition, she would jump about. Even when she was resting on a spot, she would run around him. He had thought they would get increasingly closer and slowly become a real life couple. He had even mentally prepared their special wedding in the future. However, no one could have expected that things would change. Joshua was in a daze for a relatively long period of time. By the time he recovered his senses, he realized that she had already taken her minions to attack his second turret. Rachel felt really guilty. She was really alert, as she still hadn't seen Joshua yet. He had to be hiding somewhere. However, she was already at his second turret. Why hadn't Joshua appeared? This guy, could it be that he had snuck up on her? She was both staring at her main tower and in front of her. Her fingers flew over the screen at a fast speed, quietly waiting for Joshua to appear. Just then, she finally saw Joshua. The moment she saw his level, she thought her eyes were playing tricks on her. The match had started for two to three minutes, and he was only level one? That was unbelievable. Don't tell me that he has been standing there in a daze for the whole time. He really didn't know how to play the game. She had originally decided to directly kill him in one move and end this game within five minutes. But when she saw how weak he was and why, Rachel's heart immediately softened. This poor guy was certainly unhappy. If she killed him quickly, would he feel useless? He had always been temperamental. He would definitely vent his anger on her if he lost too poorly. She wanted to take revenge, but she didn't want to drag herself into trouble. Thus, when Joshua came for her, she immediately waited on the spot. But after hesitating for a while, she still left. She was giving him some time to catch his breath. Mobile versions of games were widespread in recent years. Thus, Joshua had mobile versions of other games before. However, this was his first time playing the mobile version of Cliff of Love. Although he was not very used to it, he was still able to get the hang of it in no time. The controls on the mobile were much worse than on the computer. But this didn't affect his performance. When he attacked, he realized Rachel had spotted him. However, she turned around and ran away. She ran away. Her reaction stunned him a little, and he felt an unfamiliar pain emerging in his heart suddenly. Her character in the game was still sweet Rachel. Even after so many years, she only played sweet Rachel. Even the skin she used was the same one. She liked wearing the conservative yellow dress, bright and beautiful. When they played in the past, she always stayed around him. However, after eight years, she turned and ran away after seeing him. It seemed like he hadn't played with her for a long time. Yes, he had long known that Emma was sweet Rachel. He had recognized Rachel and had occasionally turned into her live stream. Her voice hadn't changed much in all of these years. It was really similar to what it used to be in the game many years back. And he had finally found her. Joshua calmed himself down and started playing again. After Rachel turned to her base and fully healed herself, she proceeded forward again. Thanks to the delay, she realized that Joshua had killed quite a few of her minions and had leveled up. She was level 4 now, and if she fought Joshua, who was in level 3, it would be a complete victory for her. Thus, she rushed forward. It wouldn't be bullying if she killed him this way, right? Thinking about it instantly made her excited. Joshua had bullied her so many times in real life, and now she finally has the chance to kill him personally. Just when she rubbed her wrist, intending to charge forward, she suddenly realized that he had immobilized her. She was stunned, and next, he rushed in front of her 
and made a close attack. Her health decreases by half. By the time she came to her senses, she shockingly realized that she was almost dead. Episode 79. The game is still on. Rachel was dumbfounded by his perfect control of the game. What the hell? He was playing like a pro. Could it be that Joshua had found a pro to play against her? Did that work too? In her days, she had revived. She quickly activated the speed boost and ran back to base. The right thing to do was to return to base to heal up. Although her defense had been effective, Rachel still felt that she was going to die since he had an ability that could reach her in an instant. Unexpectedly, when she started running towards her base and looked back, she realized that Joshua was standing on the spot. He wasn't chasing after her. Was this... Was he giving her a chance? To repay her leniency just now? The man truly didn't like owing anyone. Or... Why had she thought of this? As that thought appeared, Rachel's body froze. She then realized that she had subconsciously imagined the person in the game to be Robert. That was Robert's character. He didn't owe anyone favors. When he gamed, if the person hadn't been hot on his heels, he would let them go. He was very loyal. He put his life values and morals into the games he played. Just like now, he had been in an inferior position. He should have killed her and fought for time for himself to level up. However, he had still let her off. Wait, why was she imagining Joshua as Robert again? Rachel shook her head and focused all of her energy on the game. And she stopped entertaining those foolish thoughts of hers. After she healed up, she started attacking again. Joshua had already destroyed her first turret. Now, they were both relying on their skills. Rachel went for Joshua to attack him. However, at that instant, she realized that he had once again targeted her and that he was about to immobilize her, so she quickly shunned him. Although she managed to avoid the stun, she didn't avoid the hit that followed. What the hell? She couldn't help but shriek. Where did Joshua find such a pro? He was amazing! She focused her energy on the game and fought with Joshua with evenly matched abilities. In the study, Joshua stared at the woman in the yellow dress. This dress was a dress they had won by killing monsters to level up. There was only one of this kind in the whole game. Thus, this was like Sweet Rachel's unique characteristic. As he watched her get hit again, although the rooms had been well soundproof, he felt as if he had heard Sweet Rachel shout, What the hell? He didn't know why, but he could hear her voice. It said, Robert, come quickly. This guy is too powerful. He could have killed her with a shot, but because of that moment of distraction, his movements slowed down. It gave her a chance to catch a breath and run away. He stared at the game and suddenly felt that his heart couldn't calm down. They had always been the best partners. They used to be so close. But why? Why did they end up like this? They had met, but they couldn't recognize each other. Even when they were in-game, they had to meet as enemies. This seemed to be the most desolate thing in the world. Even though this was just a game, Joshua suddenly felt desolate. He suddenly stood up, went out of the study room, and stood before the door of the master bedroom. At that instant, he suddenly had a strong urge to rush in and tell that woman in the room that he was Robert. He even placed his hand on the door handle. He could enter whenever he wanted. However, until the end, he remained on the spot. The memories from eight years ago had rushed in, and complex emotions once again flashed through his eyes. 
In the end, he lowered his head and gave a bitter laugh. So what if he said it? It wasn't as if he could change anything from eight years ago. It wasn't as if he could change the fact that she had played him. He took a deep breath and put his hand down. Staring at the champion on his phone, he suddenly lost the urge to continue playing. He exited the game, turned around, and entered the study room. In the master bedroom, Rachel had accumulated energy and was waiting to utterly defeat him. Joshua's performance did not mean much. She was still really powerful. But who could have told her? What was this? Her opponent had quit the match? Her opponent had quit the match! What the hell? Was he admitting defeat knowing that he couldn't beat her? She jumped off the bed, directly opened the door, and rushed into the study room. At the doorstep, she heard Joshua's voice from the inside of the study room saying, Oh, okay. He was actually on the phone. So had he abandoned the match? Rachel took two steps backwards and returned to the room. She waited patiently for him to come back online again, but his phone call seemed to last for a long time. As she was not active on the game, the system had exited the game application for her. Their competition had ended as they had stopped playing. Rachel lay on the bed, staring at the ceiling. She didn't know why, but she suddenly started laughing. She had suddenly recalled that time that she got stronger thanks to Robert's guidance, so she recklessly insisted on challenging him to a one-on-one. -on -one. He was so pestered by her that he had no choice but to start a game. They both started by killing small monsters in order to level up, and they didn't attack each other. After a while, she couldn't take it any longer and provoked him. However, she ended up getting hit by him. She shouted in the game directly, Hey Robert, how dare you attack me? Didn't you attack me too? That's different, I'm a girl and you should go easy on me. How do we play then? Rachel covered her mouth and laughed. I also don't know, but I don't want you to attack me and I don't want to attack you either. However, when I see you, I can't resist jumping on you. Her honest words made him stop talking for a moment. Rachel giggled and said, Don't tell me that you're embarrassed. No. Rachel started laughing heartedly and said, You're embarrassed. Woman, why are you so annoying? He scolded her, but they didn't quit the game. They even worked together to kill a small monster. The match became a joke in the end. However, the sweeter it had been in the past, the sadder it seemed now. Robert had made her fall deeply in love and then hate him deeply for a long eight years. The hate had been there so long that it was deeply buried in her heart and she was completely unable to forget it. As she laid on the bed for some time, she suddenly stuck out her hands and covered her eyes. After a while, Two drops of tears rolled out of the corner of her eyes. Robert, why didn't you appear then? Why hadn't he appeared? Joshua, who was in the study room, was standing on the balcony and looking into the distant starry sky, trying to push back memories. That day, he did go and remained near the cafe for the whole time. He stayed there until the end. The haze in Washington was not as bad as eight years ago. That day was a sunny day. There weren't many people in the cafe. Thus, after he arrived, he saw her immediately. He quietly stood outside the cafe and watched her. She was just like what he had imagined. Beautiful, eye-catching, and lively. Just like a little son. He even nervously held his phone. He wanted to enter the cafe but he was hesitant. He shouldn't be entering. He should hate her. Hate her. But in the end, he still couldn't resist the yearning he had for her. He pushed the cafe door open and walked in. 
At that moment, she was conversing on the phone. She looked really bored, sitting on the couch, but it also showed that she was distracted. He didn't know what the person on the other end of the phone said, but she smiled and replied, Yes, I'm in Washington. She held her chin with one hand, and after she finished saying this, her beautiful eyes drifted to the door cafe. The 18-year-old version of her was as beautiful as a dahlia blooming on the edge of a cliff. Arrogantly beautiful and eye-catching. Okay, I will let you go. I'm very busy right now. Let's talk another time. Okay, please help me buy that bag. I like the pink-colored one. I'll transfer the money to you first. Okay, it's decided. I really have something going on and have to hang up. I will treat you to a meal when I'm back. Just at that moment, his phone vibrated. After he looked down and saw the contents of the message, he suddenly lifted his head and stared at her with his black eyes full of anger. And then, he turned around and left. When he pushed open the door of the cafe and the fresh, cold air blew in, he stood on the spot and looked at her. That day, he spent the whole time watching her from outside. He watched her hail a cab and leave and watched her return. He watched her wait patiently in the cafe, and even by the time the sky turned dark, she still hadn't left. In the end, a middle-aged man rushed over. The man was dressed refinedly and had the aura of an educated merchant. They looked alike, and it seemed like it was the father she had talked about, the one who truly doted on her. He saw her crying in her father's arms and watched as her father waited with her. He watched from the distance in the late night as desolation rushed into his heart. It felt terrible, right? Because he had been played by her. But did she know how terrible it felt to be played with? Yet, when he saw how sad she was, he didn't feel any pleasure. And instead, all he felt was pain. He had originally wanted revenge. He wanted to punish her. But at that moment, he still chose to leave. He had thought that by letting her off, he would also be let off. However, unexpectedly, when he saw her again eight years later, he has lost his mental stability. He had used a shameful way to make her stay by his side, and every single time he had to try to convince himself that it was to fulfill his revenge from eight years ago. However, he only understood now that he hadn't done it for revenge. He just simply wanted to make her stay by his side. Now that she was finally by his side, what was there to be unhappy about? With this in mind, Joshua put out his cigarette. Let the past stay in the past. He turned around and walked into the master bedroom. He realized that the woman was already sleeping deeply. But she wasn't sleeping peacefully. Tears were hanging on the corner of her eyes. The Alley family had been the richest in her district then. She had been a pampered girl who had grown up in a rich family. She hadn't hesitated to buy a bag that cost more than a thousand dollars then. But what had exactly happened to her family that made her lower herself down to such an extent? Her money. Episode 80 at the birthday bash. Joshua stared at Rachel, frowning. He stuck out his hand to smoothen out the crease between her eyebrows and covered her with the blanket. Then, he took her phone and placed it on the side. He quietly lay beside her and fell asleep with her scent. Joshua woke up when the sky had already started brightening up. The phone he had placed on the bedside table started to vibrate. He turned his head, picked up Rachel's phone, and walked to the balcony. When he saw the name Old Hag on the screen, he hesitated for a moment, but chose to pick up in the end. After he picked up, he heard a loud female voice. Rachel, where the hell are you? I asked you to report today. Why aren't you here? Her tone showed pure dislike. Joshua frowned and kept quiet. The person on the other side of the phone continued, Are you mute? Listen to me. You don't have to come to the office. 
go and wait at Pavilion Center now. Do you hear me? Joshua frowned again, and just when he was about to speak, he heard a whine behind him. Rachel had woken up. Joshua turned around and saw her half-awake, blank expression. He gave it a thought, walked back, and placed the phone by her ear. She was still in a daze, and her confused expression when she looked up was really cute. But next, the voice of the old hag on the other end could be heard. Hey, Rachel, do you hear me? Rachel immediately perked up. She raised her head and said, I've heard you. Her boss snorted coldly and continued. Let me tell you, it is Jane Hunter's birthday today. Tonight, there will be a lot of people in the industry in the pavilion. You had better wait there and uncover something. Okay, I promise to complete the mission. After Rachel replied, the old hag snorted again. Rachel only felt relieved after she hung up. When she looked at the time, she realized that it was only 7 in the morning. The banquet was in the evening, so asking her to wait there at such an hour was obviously to make a joke out of her. Damn it. When the managing editor had been around, she had already been the best among all of the reporters. But now, she was like a newbie and had to start afresh. She slammed the pillow with force, and when she lifted her head again, she realized that Joshua had already entered the bathroom. He hadn't heard it, right? Rachel came out of bed and briefly put on makeup to cover the scar on her face. She went downstairs and ate breakfast with Joshua. Thereafter, they left separately. In the front yard, Joshua got in the car and asked, Do you need me to take you? Rachel shook her head and replied, It's okay. I will hail a cab. Joshua's gaze sank. Hail a cab? As he recalled her taking the bus, he realized that she was probably going to do so again. Right? Looking at her, Joshua nodded and replied, Give me the receipt. I'll pay for it. You'll pay for it? Rachel's eyes immediately shone. Okay. She wasn't going to mistreat herself. Since someone was going to pay for it, she was obviously going to hail a cab. Two hours later, Joshua sat in his office and saw the gray skies from his window. The weather had changed drastically today. The temperature had dropped by approximately five to six degrees. The wind was strong and it had even started drizzling. In this weather, was she camping outside, under the rain and waiting to catch the news, like the other reporters? As he thought about it, he frowned and looked at the documents in his hands. Yet, he wasn't really processing any of it. After a while, he looked at Santiago and he said, Cancel all the plans for this evening. Santiago froze. Why? To attend Jane Hunter's birthday party. The temperature dropped, but Rachel wasn't wearing enough layers today. She stood on the pavement near the hotel, stomping her feet and blowing into the air. She also looked at her phone from time to time. It was just noon. The sky was gray and it was drizzling. She was freezing. The party only started in the evening, and she had just found out that it was a private, small-scaled party. Usually, it was hard to get any news from such parties. The chief editor had sent her here just to torture her. This old hag! Rachel looked around her, and when she was about to find a place to rest, or order a coffee from a neighboring cafe to warm herself up, a car stopped in front of her. The car window was opened, and it revealed Penelope's face. When she had arrived beside Rachel, she had opened the car window with the heater on. She spoke with a smile. Wow, our hardworking missus has started working again. That's heartfelt, professional. Rachel rolled her eyes at her and turned around, wanting to leave. Penelope tried stopping her by saying, stop there. Rachel refused to be bothered with her and continued walking forward. 
Penelope directly walked out of the car and walked in front of her. She coldly sneered and said, I asked you to stop there. Did you not hear me? Rachel looked at her with a smile and retorted, Who are you to ask me to stop? They were both reporters. Did Penelope think she could act so arrogant just because she had an affair with the managing editor? She was really crazy. Recently, Penelope was behaving really arrogant. The time when she posted the article and video of Matthew Jensen slapping Rachel, she had gotten instant fame. Under the protection of the managing editor, Penelope could get whatever she wanted in the news agency. Furthermore, he had promised to award her the biannual Best Worker Award. When she thought about it, Penelope smiled and said, Rachel, you probably don't know. When I left the office today, the managing editor and my aunt were commenting that your performance has been bad lately. If you don't find out anything today, you will have to pack your stuff and leave the news agency. Rachel frowned and asked, So? So, you better obediently wait here so that you don't miss any huge scoops. They were determined to make life difficult for her. If a newbie in the industry was disliked by the seniors, that was how they punished the person. It was a joke that they were punishing her like that. Newbie reporters weren't usually able to find any news, but they still reported back to the chief editor for checking. I've been here a whole day. Even if I don't find anything, I've still put in hard work. As for her, no matter whether she kept watching outside or got no huge scoops, the chief editor would not let her off. Rachel didn't speak. Although she was freezing from the cold, she widened her eyes and stared at Penelope like an idiot. Her stare made Penelope really uncomfortable, and she asked, What are you looking at? I am looking at how an idiot behaves. She walked forward and skirted around Penelope, asking, How can you be so sure that I won't be able to get any scoops? She was not brainless enough to listen to them and just freeze there. Rachel didn't speak and entered the cafe. At the same time, a pair of eyes were staring from outside. It was only until four or five in the afternoon that she finally saw a few low-key cars driving into the underground car park and directly into the hotel. Rachel could no longer loaf around and she walked out of the cafe. The moment she stepped out, a gush of cold air hit her. She shivered as she hugged herself. When she was about to continue moving forward, her arm was suddenly grabbed by someone. Turning her head around, she saw Joshua in sunglasses and wearing a mask standing beside her. Joshua was covered really thoroughly. No one could tell how he looked. However, with that aura of his, who wouldn't turn around to glance? Jane Hunter's birthday party was just across the road. Who could that artist be? While everyone was guessing, Rachel widened her eyes. Her first reaction was to look at her surroundings and grab Joshua. She looked around anxiously and realized that his car was waiting right before her. She didn't need his order. She ran over and entered the car smoothly. She then turned to look at Joshua and patted her chest. She was still shocked by the situation they were in. She anxiously asked, Why are you here? Why was he there? Why couldn't he be here? What kind of tone was that? Joshua ignored her question and removed his sunglasses as well as the mask. He casually took off his coat and placed it on her. The warm coat carried his scent. It was so warm, it relaxed her. Rachel's body warmed up and her heart felt even warmer. No matter how he treated her, who was always a gentleman when it came to these things. But he was still expressionless and cold. He looked as if someone owed him a huge sum of money. Um, okay then. She really did owe him two million dollars. 
Thus, Rachel thanked him. Thank you. She was really not intending to reject his kindness. Who would have expected the temperature to drop so drastically? Moreover, it had been drizzling for the whole day. She still had to survive outdoors for a few more hours. But why was this guy still expressionless after she had thanked him? Rachel awkwardly twitched her lips and turned around, intending to alight from the car. However, when she was about to alight, she realized that the car had started moving. Rachel immediately panicked. Hey, I haven't gotten out of the car. However, the driver had no intention of stopping. So Rachel anxiously looked at Joshua. This guy knew that she was out here searching for news and he had intentionally come to stop her. Yet, hadn't they agreed that he wouldn't get involved with her job? Rachel looked at him with anxiety. Mr. Joshua, I still have to work. You... Before she could finish speaking, she watched the car make a U-turn, then take the route in front and drive right into the underground car park of the hotel. Rachel. Rachel unbelievably widened her eyes. Joshua was taking her into the hotel? Why? Didn't he know that she was there to dig for news? Then she heard Joshua say, I can't come to this party without a woman. Rachel. Santiago, who was driving. Oh my, Joshua, sir. Do you know how to woo a girl? You were actually worried that she would freeze outside and be unable to get any news, despite the hardship, and thus you rushed here. Santiago coughed, wanting to remind him of something. Rachel said, but I'm not properly dressed for the occasion. Is it all right? Joshua glanced at her and nodded, saying, This isn't an official event. I'm just meeting a few friends. Why would he need to come with a woman to a meeting with friends? Rachel wanted to ask him, but when the words were about to come out of her mouth, she swallowed them after looking at Joshua. Her heart was filled with sweetness at that instant. She wasn't an idiot. She could feel Joshua's concern for her. She had always thought that Joshua was cold to her, but unexpectedly, he cared for her. The car stopped at the underground car park. She stepped out of the car and followed Joshua upstairs. And then she realized that Joshua was actually going to Jane Hunter's birthday party.